Welcome to the analysis of Aramid synthetic fibers and asphalt mixes on local roadways webinar or on local roads webinar. Uh, my name is Paula Hyman. I'm from the Ohio LTAP Center and I will be your technical support for today's webinar. Just a one housekeeping item today. If you have questions during this presentation, please type them into the questions box and our presenter will address your question at the end of today's presentation. Um, I want to thank you in advance for your participation with that, and I don't want to take any time away from our presenter today, so I'm going to pass things off to Dr. Munir Nazal of the University of Cincinnati. Thank you, Paula. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so my name is Munir Nazal. I'm a professor of civil engineering at the University of Cincinnati. Um, I would like first to thank um, uh, my uh, co-principal investigators in um, uh, this study, uh, Dr. Sang Soo Kim and uh, uh, Dr. Ala Abbas. Um, I would like also to um, uh, thank uh, uh, Ohio Research Initiative for, uh, for Locals, or, or ORL, uh, as well as AUDIT and uh, the Federal Highway Administration uh, for uh, sponsoring this study. Um, I would like also to thank the uh, Technical Advisory uh, Committee. Um, uh, they're listed here and uh, they're uh, from uh, different local public agencies as well as uh, audit. Um, and uh, I would like uh, to have uh, uh, special thanks to uh, City of Columbus, City of Kettering and uh, Fiat County um, uh, staff and personnel um, for all their help uh, during the a construction of the test sections in um, uh, the study. Uh, I would like also to, uh, to thank uh, the fiber companies who donated uh, their products um, uh, for uh, this study, um, uh, basically during the uh, lab study as well as during the uh, field study. Um, uh, and I would like uh, 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 finally to thank uh, Ms. Vicky Fout for uh, her time and assistance uh, during this project. Um, so this is the outline for my presentation. I will start with a, a, some background um, information um, uh, about this study and uh, uh, basically uh, uh, trying to explain why the study was initiated and from there, I will be talking about the objectives, um, the uh, project overview, the main tasks, um, and uh, basically I will be uh, going into the phase one, um, uh, mainly the testing program and the main findings that we got from uh, phase one. And then I'll talk about uh, phase two and the results of phase two and uh, uh, basically the conclusions, um, the main conclusions that we have from the study and uh, as well as uh, recommendations. And uh, if we have um, uh, time for uh, questions, I will be uh, glad to answer uh, any of those uh, uh, questions. Um, so uh, as, uh, as you know, um, uh, uh, one of the main uh, de-stresses in um, uh, asphalt overlays is, is, is cracking and specifically uh, reflective cracking. Um, and uh, therefore, there were uh, different technologies and uh, additives that have been used to enhance the uh, 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 cracking resistance of asphalt mixtures, um, uh, basically used uh, for um, uh, overlays. Um, one of those uh, technologies is the use of uh, aramid fiber, um, which is a heat resistance, high strength, uh, uh, basically fibers. Um, those fibers have uh, been used for uh, almost a decade or so. Um, and the, they had uh, some studies have shown that uh, they can uh, improve um, uh, the resistance of asphalt mixtures uh, to cracking as well as uh, uh, rutting. Um, and uh, 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 therefore, um, those um, uh, basically um, fibers might have some benefits uh, to extend uh, the service life and enhance the performance of the uh, overlays. Um, but despite, despite those uh, potential benefits, um, uh, the use of, uh, uh, of the aramid fiber um, uh, was uh, not really, uh, the use of aramid fiber in asphalt mixtures uh, on local roads was not really evaluated um, uh, uh, and limited data uh, is uh, basically uh, available on um, the performance of um, fiber reinforced or aramid fiber reinforced mixes uh, on local roads. 
Um, uh, furthermore, um, uh, there is really no research that have been conducted to evaluate um, their effectiveness in uh, controlling uh, or eliminating ref uh, reflective cracking, um, especially as compared to using the uh, uh, stress absorbing membrane interlayer, uh, which is a commonly, which is, I would say, a, have been used by uh, some local public agencies um, in Ohio, basically to control reflective cracking. Um, and the, there was really um, a, a, a research was not, um, uh, therefore we had uh, uh, to have a study uh, that answer those questions and uh, specifically answer the questions for uh, mixes used on uh, local uh, roadways. And uh, uh, from here, a, a study was initiated uh, by uh, Oral, um, and the study had um, uh, several objectives, but I'm really uh, listing the main objectives uh, here in, in this slide. Uh, uh, the first and the, uh, most important uh, was uh, to evaluate the rutting and cracking resistance uh, of a non-polymer modified aramid fiber reinforced asphalt mixer um, and compare it uh, uh, to that, uh, 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 basically, of a polymer modified asphalt mixes. And again, one of the most important thing is that everything that we will be talking about is really for asphalt mixes used uh, on local roadways. And th that is uh, something that should be uh, uh, highlighted in uh, in this uh, presentation. So the focus was really uh, on a, a asphalt mixtures typically used for. Um, uh, basically resurfacing application on uh, local roadways. Um, we also uh, 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 wanted to evaluate the, the performance of a, 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 a non-polymer modified uh, fiber reinforced mixtures uh, uh, or an overlay uh, with those type of mixes without using a SAMI and compare it basically uh, to an overlay um, uh, uh, with uh, that is uh, consisting of a non-reinforced uh, asphalt mixes and uh, uh, where a SAMI is being used basically to compare um, which basically is um, uh, which technique might be uh, more effective in controlling um, reflective cracking. And another important thing was um, uh, since um, there are different um, uh, uh, fiber length and dosage um, uh, for um, uh, those uh, aramid fibers, we wanted also to identify uh, the optimal fiber dosage and length uh, for uh, the different types of uh, aramid fibers that is available um, and uh, select basically uh, the optimal dosage that uh, can be uh, used by uh, local uh, public agencies. Um, so the project, uh, basically, we have um, uh, uh, this project, uh, you know, to answer those and uh, address all those objectives. Um, uh, we had a, a two-phase study. Um, uh, uh, the first phase, which consisted of uh, seven tasks, and I'm, I'm listing those here. And really, the first uh, phase was really to answer uh, uh, maybe um, uh, uh, or to address uh, objective number, uh, partially address objective number one and on objective number three. And uh, uh, basically, we were trying to evaluate the rutting and uh, 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 basically cracking a resistance of uh, mixes with and without fibers at using different uh, 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 fiber dosage as well as that as we will talk about. So we had a comprehensive um, lab testing uh, plan and uh, also we did um, uh, there uh, based on that we designed also a, a field and lab uh, uh, study uh, for uh, phase two. Um, phase two basically consisted mainly of a, a constructing test sections and uh, obtaining uh, uh, samples uh, during uh, the construction and uh, compacting them and testing them in the lab, um, as well as doing a, a, a monitoring um, the preliminary uh, performance uh, or field performance uh, there, and finally submitting a final uh, report. So um, 
uh, the, I will start with phase one, uh, the testing program. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, the overview of the testing program. As you can see, it's a, a very comprehensive uh, testing program where um, we uh, had uh, different types of binders, but the focus really was on a, a PG64-22 or a, a basically a neat binder meeting the specification uh, uh, for a PG64-22. This is the, I, I would say, the commonly used asphalt or the most commonly used asphalt binder uh, in mixes, in surface mixes, um, in on local roads in Ohio. Um, so the focus there was to use two types of uh, fiber. Um, uh, we're referring to them as a type A and type B. Um, and then we had the different dosages and length. I'll be talking about that, uh, the dosages and the length uh, in, in the next slide. Uh, so we started with that. Based on that, we determined what is the optimal um, uh, or uh, dosage, and uh, basically uh, we did a, a, a more limited study uh, with a PG58-28, and uh, we compared everything to uh, the control, I would say, um, or mixes with the con control binder, the PG58-28 and the PG64-22, uh, as well as a, a polymer-modified PG70 minus a 22M, um, a, all of the mixes here um, in our phase one were consisted or consisted of a type one mix uh, meeting uh, the specification of the city of Columbus for medium traffic. So, um, and the, this is typically also met the specification of uh, the city of Kettering as well as other local public agencies um, a, a, in Ohio. So this is basically a um, mix meeting that specification uh, for uh, uh, locals. And uh, basically we did a, a, a comprehensive evaluation to evaluate um, the reflection cracking, uh, which was done using the Texas overlay. Um, uh, we did also uh, the evaluated the uh, fatigue cracking, uh, uh, basically using the semicircular bending, uh, being, uh, bending test, as well as the uh, ideal um, uh, cracking test. Uh, we used the uh, asphalt concrete a cracking device uh, to evaluate the low temperature cracking, and then we used the Hamburg loaded wheel uh, test for rutting and also for durability. And we did statistical analysis basically, and um, to find uh, to to compare the, the uh, basically the properties of the different mixes. If we want to get a closer look at uh, what dosages and uh, what um, a basically uh, a length we have. Uh, we started with two different lengths, uh, which is um, the uh, 0.75, uh, which is 19 millimeter, and then basically double that, which is an inch and a half. Uh, so we have two different uh, fiber lengths. Um, we also used um, the recommended dosage uh, 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 or the dosage basically recommended by the uh, fiber. Uh, and in, in both uh, like for both type of fiber we uh, just very important thing is um we uh, the aramid fiber dosage um was the same which is 2.1 ounce per um uh, basically a, a, a ton uh, of mix uh but basically because um, uh, each one have a different uh, 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 basically additive or the components of each one is different. Therefore, we had to uh, uh, basically uh, uh, use different dosages. But again, in, in all cases, the recommended dosage was included a 2.1 ounce um, of aramid fiber uh, per uh, ton of mix, and then uh, one and a half times that, and then uh, two times that dosage. Um, we did the, uh, basically the mix design and then basically we did the uh, uh, performance evaluation that we discussed in the a previous um, uh, slide. So this is basically um, an overview of um, those tests that we have uh, used. Um, all mixes were compacted at uh, 7 uh, plus or minus 0.5. So all mixes in all tests uh, basically we were targeting a an air void of um, a seven plus or minus 0.5 because um, most of those uh, uh, test procedure uh, suggest or recommend to use 
uh, mixes that are compacted at this uh, basically uh, a, a, a compaction level. Um, so I will be talking uh, mainly about uh, the results, and again, um, uh, due to the uh, limits, we will be just focusing on uh, uh, some of uh, uh, the results, not all the results. Uh, I will start with the SCB, and again, I'm just showing that uh, test because maybe some of you are not familiar with it. And uh, uh, basically, with this test, we are uh, uh, getting, as you can see, we are breaking a semi. Um, or a half a circle, um, um, a basically sample uh, that has a notch in the middle. And uh, through the load displacement curve that you see here, um, we will be analyzing uh, or we analyze basically uh, the data and getting the uh, work of fracture or the fracture energy, which is the uh, uh, area under the load displacement. And then um, uh, uh, we divide that by basically uh, the slope uh, of the post peak uh, curve that you see here and um, uh, multiply that by a conversion vector and this will give us a flexibility index um, we have used which is i will not be going into that but there is a normalized fracture energy this is another parameter that uh, was suggested uh, uh, based on uh, previous research work uh, that i have conducted uh, uh, for a uh, uh, audit um, which is basically the fracture energy uh, normalized by the peak uh, uh, stress. Um, so the SCB, uh, those are the uh, results of the flexibility index. Um, as you can see here, um, um, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, note that we have uh, different uh, fiber length and doses. Um, uh, if we go here, uh, the first uh, uh, two numbers indicate what is the uh, type of um, binder. Uh, the second indicates the type of, I mean, uh, the type of binder. The second indicates uh, basically an A or a B, A for fiber A, B for fiber B, and the S for short and one, this indicates it's uh, 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 the recommended dosage um, uh, basically uh, for, uh, or the dosage that is recommended by uh, 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 the manufacturers. Um, we had also a, a here the N, this means that it is a, it was not reinforced or a, a non-reinforced, Mix. So we have a 64, a 70, uh, and a 58. So what, what we can see here, um, and, and the first thing that we can see is um, the, the addition of um, uh, uh, the fiber uh, seems to enhance the flexibility index. Um, and uh, this means uh, it might suggest that it also enhances the cracking resistance of uh, the mixes. So if we compare uh, here, um, we can see that the optimal uh, really uh, case um, in, 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 in here is, is really the uh, case where we have uh, for type A uh, for, or for type B, it's the short uh, uh, fiber, uh, which is 19 millimeter, at the uh, recommended dosage by um, uh, the uh, basically manufacturer. Um, and again, it is, as you can see here, it's uh, it enhanced the uh, a cracking resistance um, as compared basically to the non-reinforced. Uh, fiber A um, had also a, a, a improved um, a, 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 a basically the flexibility index and the cracking, um, but the optimal, as you can see here, is when uh, we are using a long fiber A with a dosage, uh, with the recommended dosage of uh, the manufacturer. And um, basically, both of those are actually the recommended length and dosage um, by uh, by the manufacturers. And the manufacturers are uh, both manufacturers are suggesting different length. So it, it seems that um, uh, their um, basically conclusions about or their recommendation seems at least based on the flexibility index, it, it seems to be uh, correct. We did the ideal CT and the, the main thing about the ideal, uh, the main parameter was the CTI and uh, uh, basically in here I'm describing, it's, you know, showing what is the CTI. Again, it's based on the fracture energy um, and also the slope of the post peak. But again, uh, there is a different way of uh, getting the post peak as you can see you can get it from uh, this uh, equation. Uh, so again, the ideal CT or the CTI index, it's a, another cracking index that uh, had been proposed um, uh, to 
uh, 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 be used to uh, basically evaluate the cracking resistance of um, uh, asphalt mixes. Um, we can see here um, uh, that basically the um, uh, 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 in, in, in this case um, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, short uh, uh, fiber B um, uh, had improved the cracking, uh, but basically um, according to the CTE index, you have to go to the uh, double of the dose in order for you um, uh, to to get uh, to um, uh, basically to uh, the highest. And again, that might one of the things that we considered in our recommendation is the cost. So uh, this is one of the things that um, it, it although it is higher, but again uh, the cost might be uh, uh, higher. Um, and now for um, uh, uh, if we're going to uh, basically uh, fiber A um, again uh, using the um, uh, fiber A with the recommended dosage, it's uh, it's improving. Um, uh, the, um, uh, basically, it's improving the um, uh, cracking. It seems also the flexibility the, uh, or the ideal CT in this, uh, in this case is slightly higher than that of the, uh, the 70. Um, uh, so it might indicate that they are uh, equivalent. Again, the 1.5 is still higher than the one, but again, um, uh, 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 the one is uh, uh, significant or it's it, it seems to be uh, higher um we did also the uh, the overlay tester and 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 uh, here with the overlay tester uh, what we have seen is that the optimal uh, was a based uh, just like based on the cti it seems that uh, a short fiber b with the recommended dosage was the optimal um the uh, it seems uh, the optimal was uh, for uh, fiber a is still uh, uh, the long but it, 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 it should go to uh, one and a half uh, uh, the dosage as uh, you can uh, see uh, here. But again, even with the, uh, one of the dosage, it still it seems to be um, uh, uh, significant or like it, it seems that it is uh, doing some improvement uh, here. Um, if we go to the low temperature cracking, um, uh, basically what we have seen um, in general, um, is uh, uh, the mixes or the fiber mix did not really uh, improve um, the cracking. There is some improvement um, or some changes, but uh, we cannot really, um, those changes are not significant enough to, to say that there is an effect of the fibers on the low temperature cracking. Um, uh, we're um, uh, basically seeing that um, it did not adversely uh, uh, effect um, uh, 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 the low temperature cracking, but at the same time, it did not really uh, uh, improve it. Um, and uh, basically, um, this is something that was uh, actually consistent with a, a previous studies that have been conducted on uh, uh, aramid fiber. Um, in terms of uh, the rutting, uh, we use the Hamburg. Um, the main parameter that I will be showing is really the rutting after uh, 20,000. Uh, this is basically the rutting in millimeter. Um, and um, our criteria is uh, basically if it is uh, higher than 20 millimeter, then we consider the, uh, basically the sample to be failed. Um, again, we're seeing that the aramid fiber uh, improved the rutting. Um, uh, if we're comparing basically whether we're using uh, type uh, uh, fiber A or fiber B, uh, we're uh, seeing that basically if we compare it basically to the control 64, um, it was um, in, in uh, for the fiber B, it was very similar to the polymer modified for uh, uh, the fiber A, um, it was uh, higher than the polymer modified. It was had higher rutting as compared basically uh, to the polymer modified. But um, uh, the optimal that we can see uh, is basically uh, using a fiber B um, uh, with a short um, length and a dosage that is recommended by the manufacturer, as well as using a uh, for fiber A using a long fiber, which is a 1.5. Uh, length and uh, basically uh, the uh, same uh, uh, dosage. Um, so um, what we have from phase one, and again, the, um, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, putting here the, ma the main findings, everything, the detailed findings can be, find, uh, can be found really from the report 
um, which should be published uh, uh, soon. Um, and uh, uh, basically, the main thing is uh, the lab study is in indicating that um, uh, that the addition of the fiber uh, seems to be improving the reflective and uh, reflective uh, and fatigue cracking, uh, uh, basically a resistance of the mixture uh, with a, a 64 minus 22, and uh, 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 specifically a type one mix. Um, uh, the optimum formulation that we have seen is for fiber A uh, is to use um, a long length of one and a half uh, uh, with the recommended uh, uh, basically dosage, uh, which is, as, as I said, have a, a 2.1 ounces of aramid fiber per ton of mix. And for fiber B, is uh, it seems that the, uh, 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 the short uh, basically length, which is the 0.75 uh, inch or 19 millimeter, as well as using the uh, recommended uh, dosage, which includes a 2.1 uh, ounce of aramid fiber per ton of mix will be uh, basically the optimal. And also the findings is that, uh, that we have, the recommendation was really to go to phase two so that we can uh, um, validate and verify the results that we had in phase one in the lab study of phase one. Um, so, Phase two mainly uh, was on in the field, but again, it also included the lab testing. Uh, so we had uh, 15 test sections, uh, basically uh, uh, in uh, 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 two cities and one county. Um, uh, basically, we had those sections in five uh, projects, uh, starting with the city of Columbus. We had a, a, um, a basically uh, there. Uh, uh, we had uh, nine uh, test sections uh, uh, constructed in three projects. Uh, the first project was uh, basically a, an asphalt overlay um, a, a placed on an, a flexible pavement. And basically what we had he, there is a, a, a PG64-22 or an, a, an unmodified polymer uh, or unmodified polymer or an unmodified polymer uh, 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 basically mix uh, uh, that is reinforced with uh, 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 the fiber uh, versus a, a PG70-22. In project two, we had a, a 64 mix with and without fiber. The one uh, with the fiber was constructed uh, without SAMI. The one um, uh, uh, with the, uh, uh, I mean, the one without the fiber was constructed with um, uh, the SAMI, as we see here, um, the the project two was constructed on a on a concrete strip, uh, street. So basically, the overlay was on top, placed on the top of a concrete street. And then in project uh, three, uh, very similar to project two, the only thing is that it was constructed on a brick street, um, a, 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 as we'll talk about it. And then we had in Fiat County, um, a, we a compared basically. Um, uh, a PG 58 minus 28 uh, mix. It was a 404 um, low volume uh, mix, um, and uh, basically uh, it had uh, uh, those mixes. Um, we had it uh, with and without a, a fiber. So we had a PG 58 uh, minus 28 with fiber, and then we had one that was without a fiber. Um, the uh, 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 we had also a project in the city of Kettering, and again, there were uh, three sections there, and we'll talk about them in a moment. But in, in there, we were evaluating really uh, using a PG64 with a, uh, a fiber, um, a, uh, with an Arabic fiber, as compared basically sections with a 70 minus 22 without any uh, fiber. So those are the locations of the uh, different uh, projects, as you can see in um, uh, in the uh, basically in Columbus, we have uh, uh, those are the three uh, uh, projects, and then basically uh, here, uh, uh, basically uh, uh, this is basically the uh, the one in Fiat County, and then basically the one in a uh, city of uh, Kettering. Um, this is basically the the different sections that we have. Um, and 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 you can see that we had the, uh, in the fr project one uh, three different sections, one with a polymer without any fiber, and then uh, we had a PG64 minus 22 with a fiber A, and then a PG64 minus 22 with a fiber B, 
a very important thing is that um, in those cases we used we did not use uh, or the city did not use any um, SAMI in 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 those uh, in in this particular project. In in project two uh, where we had a residential streets that you see here and uh, basically um, those were concrete streets and there was an asphalt overlay and uh, basically um, the one the section with the control where we have a pg64 minus 22 without any fibers uh, we had a semi layer placed before uh, placing the overlay and then uh, we had a a, a, a a in the sections with the fiber mixes, whether it is fiber A or fiber B, uh, we did not have any, um, uh, basically, um, uh, we did not really have any SAMI placed. It was only um, a, a tack coat. Um, in uh, a, a project three, very similar to project two, um, you can see there it is uh, basically several uh, brick roads near the downtown area, Columbus downtown area, and basically um, they included um, uh, sections with a PG64-22 without fibers, but a SAMI layer, as well as uh, 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 an overlay with a fiber A and 64-22, but without uh, 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 placing uh, uh, SAMI, uh, as well as uh, we had uh, sections uh, or roads, uh, basically where we had a fiber uh, uh, B, a, a PG64-22 and a fiber B a, a, without placing any um, uh, uh, SAMI. Uh, Fiat County, you can see here uh, uh, where we had it. It, it was on a uh, County Road uh, 27, and uh, uh, basically um, um, uh, we had, um, uh, as you can see, three sections, a control, a PG58-28, and then we had a, a fiber A, uh, with a PG58-28 and a mix, another section where we had mixed with fiber B with a PG8-28. And again, that was just to uh, check the uh, performance. We had also a, in this as well um, a section, not included in this, but we had also a, a section where we had a PG64-22 without a fiber. I'm not listing it um, because it was part of the, uh, the bigger project, but not the a research project. Um, in the city of Kettering, um, uh, we had a three sections. We had a control section uh, with a, a polymer modified mix, a, another one with a PG64-22 and fiber A, and a, a, a third section with a, a mix um, where we have a PG64-22 and a fiber uh, B. Um, those are pictures uh, for um, the, uh, the uh, delivery systems that have been used. Um, again, uh, in, in, um, um, uh, the companies have provided all the material. Um, the fiber companies have donated the material for um, uh, all the construction of all the sections, and also they provided the uh, delivery system, um, uh, 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 the automated delivery system, uh, or partial uh, uh, automated uh, uh, delivery system that uh, they uh, recommend. Um, and basically, um, the construction was um, smooth. There was really no issues uh, during production or a compaction of the different test sections. And again, those are pictures while we were monitoring. So all those test sections, we were monitoring that um, TAC coat was applied uniformly. Um, we wanted to make sure that there was uh, no uh, uh, issues with construction because again uh, those test sections that, so that the performance of those test sections reflects really the performance of the uh, placed asphalt mixes uh, 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 with or without uh, uh, the fiber. Uh, we took um, a density measurement just to make sure that um, the density uh, uh, was consistent and uh, uh, basically we monitored the temperature, the mixed temperature and uh, basically made sure that, again, all construction was done as uh, 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 basically the specification. We also uh, took samples. We took samples um, during at the asphalt plant as well as at the site. Uh, and basically, the, the, uh, we wanted to make sure that we, we get samples that are representative 
of the mix. Uh, uh, so we had a, a, a big piles that uh, we uh, took uh, during the uh, production and basically we made sure that the sampling um, uh, is done uh, such that uh, representative samples of the mix are uh, obtained. Um, we did the coring and the coring was really to validate some of them. Uh, air voids uh, 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 basically uh, uh, measurement um, and basically you can see here all those pictures and again we made sure that after construction um, that basically there were no issues um, after construction that basically needed to be um, uh, uh, taken in consideration for future evaluation by uh, the local public agencies. Um, so the mixes that we had, we uh, basically obtained um, uh, samples. Um, the main, uh, again, because we had a lot of uh, test sections, the, the main focus really was on the fatigue cracking and the low temperature cracking. Um, basically, the, in general, the cracking resistance of those mixes. Um, all those mixes were uh, basically compacted uh, uh, at uh, the, the target air void of uh, 7 plus or minus 0.5 and, and basically uh, they were uh, tested in uh, the lab. So um, if we're um, uh, talking about uh, the, the results, this is the city of Columbus and um, in here uh, this is the CTI uh, which is again a, a cracking index that the higher um, the, the CTI the better. Um, as you can see here if we are comparing the um, fiber mixes um, uh, to that uh, control, I would say PG64 minus 22, we can see that the uh, CTI was higher, which might indicate that um, uh, the cracking resistance of those mixes is, is higher than uh, uh, the unreinforced PG64 minus 22. Uh, when it comes to the polymer modified, it seems that they are slightly lower, uh, but again, um, from a statistical point of view, they are uh, 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 good. One of the things that I would like to note is that the average or that error bar is really, uh, this is the standard deviation. And again, those are for all mixes that mixes obtained uh, from different um, uh, production days. And uh, one of the things that we have uh, seen is that we are seeing a, a consistent, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, result. Um, uh, uh, basically, we're seeing a, a, a consistent results in different uh, production days, which might indicate that the uh, distribution of the mixes was uh, basically the distribution of the mixes where was a, in, 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 during production seems to be a, a, a similar. Um, a, a during the different production uh, days. Um, if we're looking at the Fiat County, um, uh, uh, what we have uh, noticed is that with the PG58 minus 28, the fiber A uh, seems to be improving the, uh, basically the uh, CTI and the cracking as, as compared to the PG58 minus 28. The fiber B, it, it actually reduced, but it was very similar to the 64 minus 22. It might be because of the uh, 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 the composite, um, uh, basically the components, uh, uh, which is a, a, a plastic fibers that is being used uh, as a delivery system for that uh, fiber. It might have stiffened the uh, mix and uh, it caused that uh, uh, issue. Now, the city of uh, 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 Kettering uh, results, we, we're seeing that basically um, the PG64-22 uh, had either similar, uh, which is uh, fiber A, or better CTI as, com uh, as compared to the polymer modified. Um, uh, so this is basically uh, what we can uh, see here. Uh, the flexibility index had um, uh, uh, basically, um, in general, a similar trend. The only thing is that we have seen is that the flexibility index of the polymer modified was in the city of Columbus was um, uh, uh, higher as compared to the uh, PG64 um, uh, with fiber A or fiber B, as you can see here, but still the both fibers had higher flexibility index as compared to the uh, 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 unmodified a uh, mix uh, for uh, uh, Fiat County. 
uh, basically um, uh, what we have seen is that uh, the flexibility index again very uh, we were uh, we, we were getting very consistent results as the uh, CT uh, or it was very consistent with the CTI uh, results uh, fiber a had a, a better a flexibility index and a cracking resistance as compared to uh, 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 the non uh, or the unreinforced uh, mix PG8 uh, minus 28. Um, uh, the fiber B seems to have um, um, uh, slightly lower, uh, but again, it's uh, within that uh, statistical uh, difference. So I would say that uh, they were uh, 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 similar. Um, in terms of the city of Kettering, um, it seems that a, a, a fiber B, the flexibility index, uh, had uh, was uh, higher as compared to the uh, PG70-22 uh, polymer modified, while the fiber A mix with a 64-22, basically, as you can see, it had a, a slightly lower, but still, I would say it is statistically uh, similar uh, to that of a polymer uh, modified. Um, if we are uh, 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 looking at um, uh, basically uh, the uh, asphalt uh, 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 cracking or asphalt concrete cracking um, uh, device test, again, this is a test that was developed by my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Sang Su Kim, uh, for evaluating a uh, a low temperature cracking. Um, it has been used um, extensively by a, a different researcher uh, in Ohio. And uh, uh, one of the things here that we see is uh, uh, the, in general, um, the fiber really did not really affect uh, the cracking temperature. Um, the polymer had a little bit uh, higher uh, cracking uh, temperature, but again, all of those mixes seems to have a good cracking resistance. As you can see, the cracking temperature was a minus 30, um, which is indicating that those uh, 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 mixes in general uh, is uh, uh, really um, um, uh, having good uh, 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 low temperature cracking. But again, the fiber did not really affect that uh, cracking uh, uh, um, resistance of uh, the mix. If we if we go to the Fiat County, and again, uh, just to, to remind you that uh, the Fiat County had a, a, the mix that is being used is a 404 um, LVT or low volume uh, traffic uh, mix. So it's a different uh, than the other two mixes because the other two mixes used were a type one uh, mix. The, the, the Fiat County, uh, uh, basically what we're seeing is uh, really, the, there is really no change in, in, in terms of the cracking temperature. It seems that the cracking temperature really depends more on the base asphalt binder. So in this case, you know, if you're using a, poly, a, a, a 64 minus 22, uh, basically uh, uh, you're seeing a, a lower, uh, basically, a, 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 a cracking or a low temperature cracking resistance, which is basically something uh, that um, uh, um, I wanted, uh, you know, th th this is something that is uh, expected. So, uh, uh, you know, we have um, uh, basically this is uh, consistent uh, with what we expect. But the, I think the main thing here is uh, that the fiber really it did not um, uh, affect uh, the low temperature cracking, at least based on the uh, ACCD. A test result. The city of uh, uh, Kettering, um, again, um, uh, we are seeing uh, good cracking, uh, uh, um, uh, basically low temperature cracking resistance. Um, the fiber seems to have a, a slightly lower um, as compared to the polymer modified, which again is consistent actually with the results that we have found in the city of Columbus for the uh, for the low temperature cracking. But again, um, uh, that difference is. Um, uh, might not be statistically significant, and basically it seems that all those mixes uh, have, uh, uh, we can say that they have good, um, uh, basically low temperature cracking um, uh, resistance. So I would uh, uh, go with the, now with the, uh, uh, the uh, conclusions, and again, just wanted to uh, give you a heads up is that those are the maybe main findings, but the detailed 
uh, findings or, and uh, uh, the conclusions, that all the conclusions are uh, really in the final report, um, which uh, should be, um, uh, which we should have uh, uh, really um, uh, later, um, uh, uh, again, once it's being approved for publication by the uh, research uh, office. Um, so, um, the, the first conclusion is really that the um, lab uh, testing um, that we have conducted on the field produced uh, laboratory compacted sample indicated that the fiber A and fiber B improved the cracking resistance of the mixes with a 64 minus 22. We have seen that um, uh, basically in the uh, city of Columbus. Um, so this basically um, uh, 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 this was uh, consistent in, in, in basically in the city of Columbus. Uh, now, if we're comparing um, uh, uh, the results of the uh, PG64 minus 22 with the fibers, with the aramid fibers as compared to the 70 uh, uh, minus 22, um, in terms of the SCB, um, we, we have seen um, that uh, basically uh, in the city of Columbus, the uh, 70 minus 22 uh, uh, polymer modified actually outperformed in terms of the cracking resistance, again, based on the SCB test results, uh, outperformed the fiber. But when it came to the city of Kettering, basically they had either similar uh, or higher. Now, very important thing, and I would like to, to note is that uh, uh, something that is very important, although we're using a, a 70 minus 22 and both binders in, in, in both projects met the specification uh, of the 70 minus 22 M, but again, those are coming from a two different producers. So we're expecting um, basically differences in the performance between even the same polymer modified um, mix. So this is a, a note that we want uh, to make uh, uh, sure that we have it. Um, now, if we go to the IDLCT, uh, one of the things that we have is that the um, uh, field uh, uh, produced, um, uh, uh, basically the test on the field produced, we're seeing that in general, whether it is the city of Columbus uh, or the city of Kettering, we're seeing that uh, a PG64 minus 22 with an aramid fiber seems to have uh, basically a, a similar or higher cracking resistance as compared to the uh, polymer modified. And again, that is based on the ideal uh, CT. Um, the results uh, also indicated that the fiber B improved the cracking resistance mixes uh, with a, 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 a PG58 uh, minus 28. Um, and uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, one of the things uh, 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 that we have also found is is that uh, uh, fibers uh, basically uh, uh, did not really improve the low temperature cracking of the asphalt mixes. And again, uh, the, uh, this is based on the ACCD, so it's based on a laboratory testing. This is not based on um, uh, the field uh, performance. And as I said before, it seems that the low temperature is affected by the base binder. Um, so if you're using a PG64-22, or you're using a PG58 minus 28, the 58 minus 28, because it has a, a lower end, a, a, a basically a, 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 a grade. A, basically, this is expected to improve the a, low a temperature. Um, the other important thing is um, a, 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 that we have seen is and uh, we tried actually to test um, hundreds of samples to make sure that you know we come up with um, you know uh, those conclusions is um, basically um, the fiber uh, it seems uh, uh, had similar properties during the different production days and, and and one thing that I want to mention here is uh, for the city of Columbus we had a PG64 with fiber A or fiber B that were produced at different. Uh, 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 basically days, the production days, and those days were actually um, uh, had day, days and weeks, uh, actually weeks in, 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 in separation, but still uh, when we tested the mixes obtained from those different days, still the, the mixes with the fiber had a, a good uh, 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 variability in terms of the properties, whether it is the SCB or um, the CTI, which again is, is, is suggesting that we're having a similar distribution in the uh, different 
um, a, a production days, um, which is again something that it was uh, important uh, to verify. Uh, the other important thing is um, we did um, some a, a preliminary testing on evaluating um, uh, or comparing basically using a fiber uh, mix uh, without SAMI to a, a non-reinforced mix uh, with SAMI. Uh, we use the asphalt overlay, but um, our testing, because this was the first time really, uh, not in, only in, in, in the state of Ohio, but nationally, uh, basically, uh, uh, to do such, uh, to use this test to, to do um, uh, 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 to evaluate uh, the SAMI. Uh, therefore, the results were um, like really inconclusive, and uh, real, uh, therefore the uh, final uh, uh, basically uh, verdict about uh, uh, that comparison uh, between using a fiber reinforced and a a, a non uh, fiber reinforced with SAMI. Uh, basically, uh, really, the field um, evaluation of the test sections, uh, those test sections that were constructed in the city of Columbus that had SAMI and without SAMI, we think that those sections should uh, provide their field performance, uh, basically, um, should provide, um, basically, the locals with um, more information about, really, the effectiveness of using a fiber reinforced as compared to uh, using um, uh, basically a, um, a, a a SAMI uh, layer. So the, the field performance really should um, uh, should be used to uh, do that. Uh, so I would like to uh, make um, uh, the recommendations um, again based on the um, uh, what we have uh, done uh, and based on the results that we obtained. Um, we we have uh, monitored the performance, but again, we only monitored the performance for six months. And um, basically, during the first six months, we do not expect really any difference in the performance of the different test section, um, unless really there is a premature failure, which is again, uh, we made sure that there uh, there uh, there was nothing there. So for uh, uh, therefore. Um, really, the long-term performance should be done. We're recommending a minimum of five years uh, for those test sections to be evaluated. Um, and the reason for um, uh, the five years is really because we're expecting that the cracking uh, should start to um, uh, uh, appear after a few years. And after the five years, you should see uh, some differences in the uh, uh, cracking intensity as well as extent uh, between the different um, uh, sections. Um, in, in also, that long-term evaluation should be used really to make uh, sh uh, final conclusions about the cost effectiveness of the fiber. Um, we, our most of the conclusions that you have seen are really based on lab uh, tests that are done either on lab produced or field produced. Lab produced in phase one, field produced mixes in phase two, but those are lab. And basically, those tests that we have used, um, uh, they uh, uh, they should indi uh, indicate the cracking in the feed. But again, uh, still there are studies to validate even that. So therefore, that long-term evaluation, that uh, uh, long-term evaluation should be uh, uh, used to make a final conclusions uh, about the a cost effectiveness uh, of the fiber mix and basically uh, one of the things that i would uh, would like to to highlight here is that uh, our study was really dedicated for local public agencies so those mixes that have been used in this study uh, really are for mixes that are meeting the specifications of the uh, uh, local public agencies um uh, in uh, uh, Ohio. Um, uh, with regards um, that we're recommending that the, uh, it seems that there is a lack of testing to evaluate the effectiveness of SAMI. Um, there were uh, some um, uh, basically a, a test, but they were a little bit, I would say, uh, uh, did not really have answers. And therefore, it's it's uh, therefore as a researcher, we are um, and the research team are, uh, are suggesting really to. A conduct uh, future research to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, using the SAMI layer or even um, any interlayer that is being used to uh, control 
the a, a cracking resistance. And I'm, I'm talking about really a lab uh, test that can really help us uh, to uh, basically evaluate the effectiveness of a, a using a, a an interlayer, whether it is a SAMI or any type of uh, uh, basically interlayer placed uh, before placing an um, uh, basically uh, uh, asphalt uh, uh, or an, an overlay. Um, with that, um, I would like uh, to uh, conclude. Um, I would like to thank you for um, uh, attending uh, uh, this presentation. And um, um, uh, if you have any questions, just wanted to before um, I, I say that uh, the final report again um, should be a uh, published uh, uh, soon again um, uh, the research uh, any questions about the final report uh, all the final presentation um, uh, uh, should be directed to uh, miss uh, vicky fout uh, uh, basically um, as she's the project manager and uh, she should be able to answer any questions about uh, any uh, details um, uh, with that i would like to again conclude and again thank you uh, for um, uh, basically sitting for this very uh, long uh, presentation, uh, but I, I hope it is worth it. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Nazal, we do have a question for you. Um, someone's asking for a clarification. Did the 58 minus 22 have wrap in it? Um, uh, we did uh, 64 or 58 minus 28. So I'm, I'm uh, just uh, yeah, uh, the 58 minus 28. Yeah, we uh, we had uh, we had uh, wrap uh, in in that mix. Um, I think uh, we had I think as I recall uh, uh, we had 15 percent wrap I think in that mix. But just wanted to make sure this is a 404. Okay, that is the only question that we have received uh, so far. Okay, we just had um, another one that came in. Uh, one question is, what type of SAMI was used and was the same SAMI specification used on all the project sections? Um, the SAMI, I think it's, uh, it was, uh, as, as I recall, it's, it's, it's a rubber modified uh, SAMI and uh, I don't think that it was a, a it has any fibers in it, but it was a meeting in all sections. Uh, we used actually uh, uh, the, the same contractor used it and basically it met the specification for the city of Columbus. So it was the same for all um, sections that had the SAMI, which just to clarify, it was uh, the two, two uh, concrete or the uh, two sections um, uh, um, in in the project two and two sections in project three, so that's that, that's it. Okay, we have another question for you. Yeah. How is the cost of modification with aramid fibers expected to compare to the cost of modification with polymer? So. Um, uh, so, so uh, uh, one of the things that I uh, I would like uh, to mention is that really the cost effectiveness should be um, um, done. Uh, it's in, in terms of the initial price, they are comparable, uh, but really the life cycle cost, which is um, I think um, should be done, as I said in like in in the recommendation, should be that cost effectiveness really should be evaluated based on uh, the uh, uh, field performance. Um, so, in terms of uh, initial cost, they are comparable, but in terms of a uh, life cycle cost, which is, I think, uh, more important, we cannot really answer it at the current time because um, this will require um, really uh, monitoring the sections for at least maybe five years uh, to get the long term performance and make conclusions about those uh, cost effectiveness. Yes. 
All right, thank you very much, Dr. Nazal. At this time, we have run out of time for the webinar. There are a couple of other questions that popped up in the chat pod. Uh, we will get those questions addressed for you and we'll email you some responses to those. Um, later on, as I said earlier, or as Paula said earlier, this presentation was uh, being recorded as long as the software works uh, well. The recording along with the final reports will be made available on both the OReal and the ODOT Research websites. Um, you will be able to download both of those probably by about the second week of July. Um, they should be up there by then. If you have any questions though, um, otherwise you can feel free to uh, reach out to us. Uh, you can email us at oril, O-R-I-L, at dot.ohio.gov. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.